So this is what the setup should look like. You've got a spring scale here attached to a string that holds an unknown mass. This is just a balloon with marble stuffed in it. And you've got another spring scale up here. So, um, and actually just to make sure we can all get this set up, you'll need two ring stands. So here are my crummy ring stands and I'm just drawing them sideways so you can see that there's a ring stand. And then there are um, some clamps that you should be able to get, uh, either the, the ring clamps or um, other clamps in the, the prep room. Here's the tabletop here with our spring scale of science. Um, you can attach your spring scale to this guy here. So here's our spring scale and here's another spring scale and dot 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 we'll have a string and a string and then our unknown mass is hanging down here. Okay now this will uh, tilt and fall over if you don't put a C clamp. Okay the C clamps are also in the prep room but we need a, a C clamp on both sides there and clamp it down to the table so that it won't move. So if we draw a free body diagram for the mass that's hanging, actually not just the mass that's hanging, but that, that point where all the forces are acting. So let's draw the force diagram of all the forces are acting at that point where the, all the strings come together because this is really the point where all the forces are interacting. So now if I draw an XY coordinate system, let's call this X like we would in math and Y like we would in math, and we'll put a little dot here to represent the knot. So this is our free body diagram of the knot where all the strings are connected to each other. Okay, so the best way to draw a force is start on the object and trace what's applying the force. So if I put my pencil on the knot and follow the cord, then I'll get that there is a force that's up and to the left. And again, if I put my pencil on the knot and follow the second cord, it's up and to the right. And then finally the bottom one, straight down. Now, with this bottom string and this unknown mass, I actually need to draw its own free body diagram. So here is the mass. So this is our um, unknown mass. And it has a force straight up on it. Um, because remember, put your pencil on the object and trace the cord. Now what's the other force that's acting on this hanging object? Why isn't it floating away? It's not floating away because there's a gravitational force on it. So let's write these uh, forces down. So FT, and I'm going to call this 3 because I'm going to call this string 1, string 2, and string 3 right here. Okay? And then this force down here would be our gravitational force. Now, this is a fairly simple free body diagram and a simple sum of forces. So if I sum the forces, it will truly be in the y direction. They're in equilibrium because it's not moving. It's not accelerating. The object at rest stays in rest. So all the forces are balanced. That means when I sum the forces in the y direction, I'll have that tension force up the gravitational force down and when I add them up they should equal zero. So then that tension force is equal to the gravitational force and if you remember from our study on the gravitational force that's the same thing as the weight and the weight would simply be the mass of that unknown object times the acceleration due to gravity. Remember the, the value that's about 10. So now I know that FT3 is mg, which is, I'm looking for m. So let's go back up here. Let's define these forces in the free body diagram of our knot.
Remember, this is this is the knot right here in the picture. Okay, all those forces are acting at that one place. I'm going to call this one F tension one, force tension two, and I'm going to call this force tension three. But I now know that that is also equal to the unknown mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, the problem with these forces, or these vectors, is that they're not all in one dimension. So when we had the hanging object or the object on the spring, those were all in the vertical direction. When you were pulling the block with the sandpaper on it, that, there was a horizontal force there, and they were vertical forces. And we added up the horizontal forces and we added up the vertical forces. But now, look at this guy here. He's got X and Y components. He's got an X component and a Y component. And this guy here has an X component and a Y component. So now we need to look at how do we take this vector, which looks like the hypotenuse of this triangle, how do we take this vector and separate it into its components or its pieces so that I can add up the X components and the Y components? Remember, in math class, you would never add 2X plus 4Y and get 6XY. No way. Your math teacher would be so sad about that. For the same reason that you can't add x and y together in math class, we can't add x's and y's together with vectors. So we have our x components and our y components.